Hello and welcome to a new game on the channel Planet Zoo. So, um, looking down here, this zoo is doing pretty darn well. <laughs> lots of cash, lots of conservation credits. Of course, uh, the conservation credits carry over throughout franchise. And I just want to go over a few things real quick here in this zoo as to how I've made it so successful. Um, a few tricks. Number one, solar panels. As long as you can keep them maintained, they are incredible because they have no running cost as opposed to like the uh, the transformers. They've got like a $2,000 a year running cost, right? Uh, they do have a smaller radius, but they have no negative influence either. So you can put them anywhere and they'll be perfectly fine. As long as they got sun, I believe. <laughs> I think I don't think you can put them in caves and stuff like that, which... Uh, this zoo is not my first zoo. This is probably like my 10th zoo I've been uh, playing around with and the reason for that mostly is I've been restarting zoos because I've tried to do a lot of different tiered zoos and stuff and it just doesn't work out that well. Like, it gets pretty crazy trying to switch between exhibits and trying to build on top of other ones and it's just a freaking nightmare in general. So... Got almost everything researched in this zoo, it looks like. Yeah. Just about. Let's check that vet research, actually. I think there's still a few things in here. Yep, still a few to research in there. Now, um... Water. Water's a big one. I don't think I have any water bowls, no water pumps, nothing like that. And the reason is, water bowls, they need to be filled by keepers, and when you have a lot of animals, they go through the water pretty quickly. So I like using natural water sources. Water pumps, yeah, they're, they have an unlimited supply of water, but they have a $50 running cost. And just this area here, I've got three exhibits. So if I was to put one, one in each of those, that's $150 a year running cost as opposed to just having bodies of water in there and covered by a filter, which a filter is only $100 a year running cost. So one filter, if I was to use just one filter for these three exhibits, that's already saving 50 bucks. That's very little, but every penny counts, right? <clears throat> so there's three, six, seven, um, there's technically two here, two here, and one there, even though these four aren't being used right now, I was setting those up for the gorillas, and the gorillas, you know, they got their issues. Uh, mostly market-wise. We got Peafowl over here, Flamingos here, and the main water feature is this hole right here. We go down here, and it's a series of caverns. And these all run to different exhibits. This one runs over here to the peafowl and unfinished gorillas. Oh, we got a walkway pillar all the way down this one. <laughs> yeah. So all the water, all the bodies of water in every single exhibit is connected. Over here at the tortoise, you can see I got the, got the well down to there. And in here, the tortoise exhibit uh, where is it? It's right, right over here. Yeah, one there, one there, and those connect up. Yeah. Speaking of tortoise, there's some of my beautiful artwork. <laughs> I haven't uh, really decorated. I've kind of done this exhibit for decoration. Still, some more I could do. I started doing some vines and stuff, but. The X hotkey wasn't working, so I gave up. <laughs> and, yeah, I never really continued on with it. Which, this zoo, I'm not really uh, using so much anymore. Oh, and, yikes. Yeah, there we go. Um, Peafowl exhibit. We got, we got disease like crazy going on here. And the reason is because there's 63 of them in there. <laughs> uh, yeah. I already pulled my best peafowl out. Pulled my best tortoises out. 
and I've taken them over to a new zoo, which I'll load up here in a minute. But um, yeah, so I've only got I've only got three exhibits per tortoise here, which is probably the smallest number of exhibits I've done for tortoise because that's what I've been doing from the beginning of the game to earn those conservation credits. Breed them, sell them. Got Galapagos here and Aldabras here. And these are kind of just breeding farm pens. And what I'll do is I'll have a breeding set in here, breeding set in here, breeding set in here. And I stop, I, when I first started breeding tortoise, I would have one male and three females. However, after about 10 minutes, I had about 200 baby tortoise and they take 22 to 25 years, depending on the uh, species to reach maturity to which you can sell. So it got a little out of hand. And uh, so I cut it down to just one male, one female as a breeding pair. And in this setup, I had um, a breeding pair here, here, and here. So three different pairs, and I would rotate them out through the generations, which they live for, well, I think the sh youngest tortoise I've had die of old age was like 111, and they go all the way up to like 160. <laughs> so, And they breed that entire time from like 22, 25 years old to like 160. They're still pumping out babies. And you can see, even still, there's a ton of babies in here, and a ton of babies in here. And what I would typically do is move all of the babies into here that I didn't want. Like, I would select the best baby of each gender and keep them in here. And then when the next generation comes out, if there were any better, swap them out. And just keep the best baby in each of them. And then once they reach maturity... Uh, when I say the best baby, I mean, um, they would have to obviously have better genetics than their parents, and if that were the case, once they reached maturity, I would offload the parents. <laughs> and then move them about, you know, move a, move a male this way, move a female that way, and just keep those cycles going. And it's worked out pretty good. Worked out pretty darn good. Flamingos, they're a lot easier. Can just keep them... I don't need multiple exhibits for the flamingos because they tend to pair up on their own. One male, one female, they tend to pair up pretty well. And you can have up to 500 of them in a group. Um, that's quite excessive. They don't really sell very well, so if I start getting too many, which it took me a little bit of learning to get the flamingos going successfully because I would have... I'd start with a few, they'd breed up, get to like 20, 30, 40 of them, and then have a huge die-off to the point where my exhibit's almost extinct, and then they would come back and then die off, and yeah, that was the early st the early zoos I had that issue. Uh, Peafowl also, very easy to keep, uh, because you can have four males and 16 females in one enclosure. Very easy just to keep a fairly diverse gene pool going. And so every now and then, you know, like I say every now and then, they they have a very fast life in terms of the other animals. They live like, what, 20, 30 years, something like that. And they reproduce every year with multiple. So you just come through and cull the flock every now and then. <laughs> and just keep those numbers down to a manageable level, which for males and 16 females is not a manageable level on any, to any degree. Um... Animal died of starvation. Oh no. Oh no. The peafowl are not being fed. They're gonna riot. <laughs> anyway. Um. Oh yeah. And the caverns. That worked fine. Until I got like 40 peafowl in here. Once I got 40 peafowl in here, I needed to add another filter. And I've got both these filters side by side. And we can take a look here at the coverage, right? They're just barely hitting these bodies of waters here, right, right around this radius. And yet they're keeping these clean as well. Now, when I first started, I just had the tortoise exhibits, right? And so I had the filter somewhere over here, I think. And it was just hitting this one and it covered that and those two. And then I added the flamingos. It was covering that. And then after I put in the gorillas, that's when... Uh, I built this little staff camp here between the gorilla exhibits through the filters up on top and yeah once um, 
I needed the second filter because this one wasn't there's there's no measurement that I can see as to how much it can treat but it wasn't keeping the water filtered so I added in a second one and yeah it shouldn't be anything to do with the radiuses because they're they're both covering them so yeah there is that and yeah I um I was over a million dollars with just tortoises and it was after that I added in the flamingos and the gorillas and all that and it did pretty well for my uh, for my income B files complete all right we we don't need to research we don't need to do any advanced research on the p-file they are prolific enough breeders but what were we gonna look at my finances here yeah yeah making like 50,000 a year it's pretty good pretty good money <clears throat> so yeah this is a zoo I am not really active in right now but not gonna get not gonna close it it's doing it's doing too darn good plus it's got all the uh, the four animals that I tend to start a new zoo with and so this will be a stable population more or less that I can pull from whenever I you know decide to go with another go with another zoo or something you know need to switch up the genetics a little bit so now I'm gonna go ahead and switch over to the new zoo I've been working on here we are, the zoo log. <laughs> yes, this is a zoo I've just just started a, a few hours ago, and so the decoration is nowhere to be seen. <laughs> right now, I've only got tortoise, which I've actually got four tortoise enclosures each for each species. I've got this walk-in one. This is, as of right now, strictly just for dropping the babies in. And then I've got three breeders. And that was a Galapagos and just the exact same thing going for the Aldabras. And just a crazy amount of babies. We're at year 16. I haven't had any tortoises mature yet. <laughs> I think it's at like 22, 23 years, the Galapagos, they mature. And then it's like 25, the Aldabras mature. But I've got something set up here. Here's my, uh, here's my, uh, some shops. Got Chief Beef, Info Center, and drinks, as well as some seating area. And this is a walk in exhibit. This is gonna be the flamingos. All right. And then on either side of that, I've got the walkthrough exhibits set up. Those are going to be peafowl. Let's see. We've got peafowl 1 and peafowl 2. And here we've got the flamingo grill. <laughs> okay, so the zoo log, you can kind of see <laughs> the name. It's a very prison-like setup. Uh, the walls are still low. They're going to get built up. It's all going to be... This is all going to be enclosed, you know, sort of deal. I did... Um, mostly only used breeze block and I just started using some of the uh, classical stuff here because I just got it unlocked as well as New World uh, yeah just gotta go through the research with every zoo and so they all kinda start with the same building pieces now another trick I didn't mention before and the same is true in that other zoo I had I'm not using any of the barriers. They're all null, they're all null barriers. I'm using null, bar null barriers, habitat gates, and guest gates. And because of that, my mechanics don't have to worry about repairing fencing. I don't have to worry about animals escaping because fences deteriorate and the mechanics, you know, will stop by every like 20 years or whatever. So there's no deterioration, the animals are secure. Um, just more cost effective that way because I, then I can have fewer mechanics to maintain the solar panels, the many solar panels I'll need. <laughs> as well as do research. And I'm kind of falling behind on managing the tortoises because I've been focused on building this up and I've just been leaving time run. 
Um, now, what I wanted to do first here, let's take a look at our... Oh, uh, yeah, they're failing because I've got both of my... Um, okay, that that's not good. That keeper hut's without power. Um, both of my mechanics are... Both keeper huts are without power now. And that's because I've got both... I've only got two mechanics, and they're both researching. So they aren't making their rounds repairing stuff. That's an issue. <clears throat> now the other thing to keep in cost low is keeping staff cost low, because staff are easily the most expensive... Um shall we say resource in the game so I've only got three vendors I could definitely do with adding in two more vendors just plopping them down and then they'll swap out whenever those guys go on break uh, really probably one would keep them would be the most optimized one extra vendor and I've only got one vet that is gonna change as we do have a good cash flow Take a look in here, making about 20,000 a year. So we can afford more vets. But as of, you know, even at this point, one vet is plenty to handle all of these tortoise. They can they can keep them healthy as well as do research at the same time. And with the birds, <laughs> we're going to need more than just that one vet though. Uh, they will be able to use the same vet buildings. I'm just going to have to add in more vets. Uh, the birds seem to be more disease prone, which is why tortoises are probably one of the best animals. They're so resilient, they live for so long, and they reproduce so prolifically. They're just incredible. The biggest downside is, <laughs> especially for the babies, they move so slow. You gotta, you gotta plan their exhibits very efficiently otherwise they die of starvation and dehydration and as you can see with this one I've gone away from the bodies of water for watering at least for the tortoise and I initially only had one water thing in here and these guys were starting to die of dehydration I'm like oh come on how why these don't need filtered right so that's not an issue they I, I don't know why they they just weren't drinking so I just put in three I'm like that ought to do it and yeah it has they've they've started drinking again they've gone off their dehydration strike uh, the breeders still just have one each but I'm like I can afford it I might as well do it I'm so sick of them dying. Anyway, the uh, flamingo water, that's going to need a filter on it. And I'm thinking I'm going to put the filter back here somewhere. Yeah. It's going to be a pain to get to, but... Um, probably just run a staff path around the back here. And have it loop around, because eventually I'll have an exhibit on the other side. Um, actually, that's what I could do. I could have the flamingos here staff area here and have that staff area operating like a saltwater crocodile, gharial, nile monitor exhibits you know all the good water stuff um, hippos even I don't have any of those I, I've got saltwater crocodiles and nile monitors in storage I have bred some saltwater crocodiles they're uh, <coughs> Not my favorite because you can only have a one-to-one -one and that's it in an exhibit so you gotta have multiple exhibits if you plan on breeding those effectively <laughs> and yeah what else we got going here um <laughs> low welfare yeah it's just because you're freaked out by all the people checking you out get over it you're a zoo animal deal with it Um, let's see. Yeah, I'm becoming a little callous to animals. <laughs> They've, uh, it, I don't know. It, it's like game bugs or stuff, or even game mechanics that aren't explained in the game and have no measurable value that have really, really irritated me with this game and driven me a bit nuts and maybe caused some resentment towards some animals. 
<laughs> like there was there's been many points in time where I've really just wanted an incinerator to toss a bunch of baby tortoises in just because uh, they're too much of a burden <laughs> I mean, re really, what you should be able to do is you should be able to trade babies. <laughs> you should be able to. Another solar panel failing. Well, let's call the mechanic out for that. We got one mechanic research done. There we go. Let's see, what, what should we get you on next? Maybe barriers. Definitely barriers. Get some new barriers going. Not that we use them, at least not yet. We will be. We will. There are a few exhibits where there's really no way around it. Uh, vet research is finished. That's what I like to see. Testunid herpes virus. Yeah, I kind of dropped the ball on researching viruses. <laughs> For the longest time there, my vet wasn't doing anything. <laughs> Anyway, I uh, kind of got a stairs going here. This is probably going to go. I'm trying to figure out a good way to get kind of another rooftop level here so that I can add in a solar panel to keep these covered even when this starts deteriorating. I'm uh, going to do the same on this side, but I'm just kind of using this one to figure out how I want to get to the roof there since both of these are just mirror images essentially. And I've got a few stray pieces here and there from other layouts. I can. I can go ahead and delete those. I don't need I don't need those there. Excellent. All right, so what I want to get going in this zoo here, if we take a look at animal trading, what have we got in storage? I think we still got Where did where did all of these babies come from? Wombadger Labs? Huh. They just appeared. Okay, so we've only got one uh, Eldabra tortoise in storage left, which is good. He was uh, set up to be a breeder. I'm not exactly sure I'm gonna need to use him. Let's get rid of that, and let's check the Galapagos. How many? Where did all these guys come from? How did this happen? <laughs> How did babies end up in the uh, trade center? That's very strange. I'm gonna have to sort that out, but no. What I want to do first, I don't think I have any flamingos in the trade center, do I? I still gotta pull some of those out. Yeah. And peafowl, that's what I'm after. Now. This one here, it's an albino. It's got terrible immunity gene, but longevity gene, look at that. Oh, Praneel. This guy, I want to breed like crazy. And he's he's not one of mine. I bought this one. <laughs> I bought this one for like 12 conservation credits. I think it was 12 or 13. It was something ridiculous. Yeah, he's worth 12. I'm pretty sure that's what I bought him for. Something just ridiculously cheap because peafowl, they are worthless. They're, they're pretty much worthless, <laughs> but they're very fun. Very cool. And then all these others, these are the best ones I had in Wombadger Labs. Let's zoom out because people are really loud. Maybe we should put up some quiet signs so people will stop talking so loudly. <laughs> oh, these tortoises. All right, let's go ahead and pause real quick. And so here's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking... I'm thinking we put a few um yeah here's what we'll do p file exhibit one it's gonna be perennial along with 
three of my best female peafowl. Three of the best, the three best. And then the others are going to go in here. And I'll just have to take a look through. But before I put him and the others in there, I would like to put some in here. I'll get these guys going first. You know, the, uh, <laughs> I don't want to say not so great because they're the best I've got. And they're, they're pretty good. You know, there's quite a few hundred percent genes. And, but put them in there. They're not, you know, they're, the albino is the ultimate because it is super rare, right? And I've, I've not breeded an albino yet. And I saw on the market there was an albino aldabra <laughs> tortoise, <laughs> which I've bred thousands of these tortoise and I have not gotten an albino. Maybe you need to have a lot of inbreeding for an albino, in which case that would explain why, because I've set up my breeding program to where I don't really get any inbreeding unless it's an oversight and I forget to move a tortoise and it matures in the wrong pen. Which definitely happens when you have a few hundred tortoise laying around. Um, do get some inbreeding in the peafowl though, because I just kind of leave them to their own devices for the most part. This is the first zoo I've built where I'm going to have more than one enclosure for the peafowl. And I'm doing that specifically because of that albino, and I want to um, give him a. I want to give that albino peafowl a significant presence in the gene pool of this zoo. This zoo. Uh, it was a male, right? I hope it is. If it is, it is. It is a male, so it's going to be much easier to spread his genes. And, yeah. The four males, 16 females. So you know what I actually might do? With the exception of the albino, I might put all of the peafowl in here. Or was it here? One of these. One of these, all the peafowl, except for the albino, are going to go in. Going to get research going on the peafowl. Going to get them nice and established. Build up a bunch of bebes. And just once I accumulate <laughs> a bunch of really good female peafowl, I'll throw them in. Once the research and a bunch of premium peafowl hens are accumulated, I'll throw them in with the albino and let him go. Let him do what he does. <laughs> and yeah. Just try and continue to selectively breed that way. Uh, hopefully, mate, and you know, once I get my freaking <laughs> trade center sorted here, because if we take a look, I've got 30, I got 35 in here, so I'm doing a lot better than I have been because this has been up at like 60, 70 out of 30, so I couldn't buy any animals for the longest time. And then I just went and cleared like all of my tortoises out, and then I've got a bunch of baby tortoises that just appeared I don't know how <laughs> uh, so I gotta sort them out again um, yeah so that's that's the plan that's what I'm gonna start working on and so when I've got something to show for that I'll be back with the next episode anyways thank you for watching as always have a good one